Street. Hi, everybody, and uh, good afternoon, good evening, or good morning, whenever you hear this, this video and this audio portion of the show. Uh, we also have an audio portion. It's the WDY Radio out of Maryland. My buddy Eddie Carsons uh, runs that one. And uh, this show is Dave Emmons' show. And uh, today my guest is Penny L.A. Shepard. And we're going to get to her real quick. And I've got a couple of things to do. Uh, I'm going to advertise my books, of course. And it's they, what do they want, still being sold on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and on Kindle. And then my second book that I'm, that I'm, it's going to be out in about three weeks should be done. The, 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 uh, the people there are, are talking about maybe three weeks. I'm not having it come up. I'm having a little issue there. That's, uh, that's strange. <laughs> More issues, more issues. But the book is Senseless Wars and Conflicts, and it's written by me, and it should be out in about uh, three weeks. My, my book is about, half of it is about my Vietnam memoirs, combat, and it's a perspective of a combat soldier. Then the other half of the book is about the senseless wars and conflicts that we've been in the past few years. Not few years, but ever since Vietnam and even Korea. So I'll be talking about all that. But now I'm going to introduce my guest, and uh, sorry about that picture a while ago, but the, I've had all kinds of Zoom problems. Uh, we were just talking, Penny and I were talking about some of the problems we've been having, and you can't get a hold of anybody at Zoom. If anybody can let me know, write it in the comments and let me know who I can talk to about Zoom. It's messed up. Can't get a hold of anybody. But Penny L.A. Shepard, she was MK Ultra super soldier who was genetically modified and experimented upon in utero. She said she was born August 11, 1958 into the MK Ultra program and she was housed at Langley Area 51 in Montauk. She said she emerged uh, her graduation from Project Genesis in 1976. She'll explain all that a little later. MKUltra is a covert CIA program. Its objectives are so secret as to garner the ultra-secret clearance above top secret. Even the highest offices in the land are not completely apprised of all the octopus tentacles that are umbrellaed under the MKUltra project. And we're talking deep state and all that. We're going to be talking about that. Penny knows a lot about all this stuff. I've had her on the show before, and she's a pretty exciting guest. We as citizens and as MK Ultras will never be told the extent of the projects so co covert and black that they will never see the light of day. And we're seeing that now. And Penny L.A. Shepard, glad to have you on the show again. I've had you before on just audio portion. Now we got video and audio. And I hope we're hanging on here, you know, by a thread on the Zoom. And I, I got to find out, are my five hairs showing on the top of my head? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get the five hairs to show up on, on top of my head. So, okay. All right. Beyond all that, I know that you and I know each other, so we can kid around and joke around. And, and uh, I just wanted to have you start off by explaining some of the things we just talked about and how it actually relates to what's going on right now. I mean, we're, we're at a stage now that we're at the food process where the food is going to be running short. And this is all a plan. It's all a plan, a world plan, new world order. And Penny L.A. Shepard, tell us a little bit about that. Yes, um, one of the things that I wanted to speak about, and I've, I've spoken on a couple other shows regarding this, is the uh, emerging super soldiers, which I believe um, they're, they're called sleepers also. And we have some Russian sleepers that have been awakened um, in America, I believe, due to the suicide of General uh, Lev Sortkov. Uh, he's a Russian spy master, and he killed himself in his um, in his bathroom, July fifteenth or June fifteenth, I think. And um, he was also in charge of what was called Operation Tarantula. Operation Tarantula was, in fact, Russian sleeper agents in conjunction with um, the the suitcase, the Russian nukes suitcases that are missing. As you know, we are on the precipice of World War Three because. This actually occurred uh, with the inception of the um, Ukraine and Russia conflict currently ongoing. 
and even the Pope has said we are the Pope said we are in World War Three. Uh, so back to the MK Ultra aspect of this. The MK Ultra aspects would be sleeper agents, which are in charge of uh, creating chaos and mayhem, like school shooters, which we saw in Uvalde, um, or like Russian operatives or sleeper agents, which are what we're used to hearing. You know, from I mean, you and I are because we're older. We're used to hearing about these uh, super soldier. Uh, agents, they didn't call them super soldiers though, but an MK Ultra stands for many things. It's one of the acronyms it stands for is manufactured killers, utilizing tradecraft, requiring a set, utilizing lethal tradecraft, requiring assassinations. So um, that was the actual goal of MK Ultra, but it has many faucets of that goal. So uh, to put uh, Manchurian candidates in place in the capital, running our government. So uh, if you've ever watched the Manchurian candidate, which it was, that candidate was made in Manchuria. So that's China. Right. Uh, uh, Penny, on what you're talking about, these mass killings, like in Uvalde, just, just here a while back, this guy, he had two weapons, AR-15s, one was a modified, and then he had thousands of rounds of ammo and he's had dope every day he actually shared it with his friends and he was only a hamburger flipper two three days a week actually he was more than that uh, many people don't realize he has been in the rap industry since 2011 he had between 100 grand and 300 grand in the bank so really? i didn't yes. he was only 18 wasn't he Yes, but he started in the rap industry in 2011. I have um, more details on that in another uh, another thing that I did. I can look for that real quick if you wanted to discuss that. Yeah, but, um, that's weird. I've never heard that that angle of him. I heard of, he liked rap music, but I no, he was a rap artist. He actually had a rap name. Oh, so he had he had he had music uh, on Apple on Spotify. He'd been doing this since 2011. So when people are like, hey, where did he get the money? Well, he had a substantial amount of money, you know, $5,000 to buy a weaponry if you've got 100 grand in the bank collecting, you know, income. So he did have a following um, and he, he had many different songs. He also had a tattoo on his face. Now, I'm among many of the talents that I have. One of the talents is I'm a cypherist. So in my in my instance my ciphering takes place with numerics i can take uh, numbers and translate them into messages or i can also take a look at a picture and see what people are thinking or where they were before it's something that i've done for a very long time i never realized that everybody didn't do that um so that's one of the talents that i i actually have so when i'm looking at his the number that he had tattooed on his face he had the number uh, 47 tattooed on his face and uh, that number actually comes up for um, agent 47 who is a genetically modified super soldier assassin it's a it's a movie how did they had, buy him at 18 did they start at birth or did they they just they had to they had to start at birth i mean i you know for his for his uncle to say Hey, we didn't notice anything strange. It's like, really? You didn't notice anything strange? Because you have a happy face guy on the side of his apartment or his house uh, carrying a machine gun. But I guess that that was normal. And then his music, he has this one music uh, thing where he's um, in a school. And all the symbology involved in that. Um, let me see if I can find that that particular um, are you still there? Can you see me? Yes, I can still see you. We're still here. And this is interesting because there's been other mass shootings uh, in, you know, in Brooklyn and places of that nature. Yeah. I actually did my school thesis, my master's thesis on school shootings, but I wasn't available to the knowledge that I have now, um, you know, in regards to the fact that they're MK Ultra and they're planned and they're strategized. I know, and they, I know you're a great I, investigator. I know that and on all these stories. So, yeah. Like, uh, people need to hear more from you. I'm not sure which uh, I I do a show on Dave Zublick on Friday. Right. Um, it's a three-hour show on Hollywood, and right. so um, 
You also have your own blog, uh, Penny. Yeah. Yeah, entertainment, uh, Shepherd Entertainment blog, right? I've been meaning to write that last chapter on World War III, but I just haven't gotten to it yet, although I have spoken on it. Um, why don't we go into this one, which I prepared for today, and it's about the, the suitcase nukes, and then I will try to find, when we're off air, Okay. I'll, I'll try and find that other one about the Uvalde shooting, because I did a lot of work on him. Wow, interesting. Very so, interesting. Let's just see if I can share share my screen. I, I and... just wonder why his grandmother, did she know about it? He shot her first. I don't know what grandma knew. Um, okay, can you see what I'm sharing? Yes, I see the screen. Uh, am I sharing the Military Industrial Entertainment Complex? Yes, you are. Right now it's on. For some reason, I can't see you. <laughs> well, uh, well, I'm below right. you to the far right. Uh, you might have second. to turn that up. You disappeared for some reason. I, That's okay. I only see the, I only see a little bit of. All right, fine. Well, um, <laughs> you're doing crazy thing. Okay. I can see me and I can see you, but I can see a little blank. So maybe that's what happens when you screen share. Right. So as you see, this is the military industrial entertainment complex. I call it the MIEC. Let me make this a little bit bigger and this a little bit smaller. Same thing um, that Eisenhower warned us of a MIC, military industrial complex. Yes. So there's many different military. The, the military industrial complex is I actually my definition of it these days is that the military industrial complex works in conjunction with the military industrial entertainment complex which since i was in the entertainment industry for almost 50 years that's what i speak upon right. i also speak upon um mk ultra in hollywood which i refer to as hollywood i go by um penny la shepherd agent x11 hollywood dark journalist um, and as you can see here, it's Project Genesis, so Project Eve, and then there you are, Dave. There I am. You did a good job there. You, you inserted me just right there. Yeah. You like that? <laughs> You're inserted, Dave. Okay, so I've, first. I've been inserted just by implants. Yes. Right. Me too. Um, okay, so this was actually, I was going to do this for, for Nick's show, but um, I couldn't get, get my stuff to work, as a matter of fact. So, um here are the topics that I was going to go over, and then we'll go back to uh, the MK Ultra thing when we go off the air. I'll look for that, and we'll, I'll bring that up. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things was this: was the Pope going to retire? He declared that World War II, World War Three, was here, is here, and then suicided. FSB General Sotskov is a Russian sleeper agent awakened, and Anna Chapman, Russian spy. Now, uh, she also uh, is, was involved with Snowden, by the way. Um, and then Russia's 100 suitcase nukes, Operation Tarantula, which was under the suicided FSB General Sotkov. And this is all MK Ultra stuff. And then is the real red hunt for uh, Red October, Helena Hutchinson's and the real Red Dawn. I also speak on movies being real. So when Tom comes on and he tells you he wrote The Matrix and he's showing you how they are writing about him utilizing his actual tradecraft and robbing him of it, which is what they do. And then I am here to tell you that I found out I'm the actual 11 and Stranger Things. This is why I speak upon the, um, the entertainment industry, because it is very satanic and it is part of the military industrial entertainment complex, which works in conjunction with our military for propagandist reasons. Um, so uh, I'm also going to cite real quick, Fair Use Section 107, Copyright Act of 1976, Copyright Disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, education, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit educational or personal use tips the balance in, fair, in favor of fair use. So I might be using some cuts that um, are proprietary, but this, it absolves us for okay. it, the airing of it because it's specifically for education purposes. Okay, and I forgot to tell the people that you're also a singer and you've been a performer for some time and uh, that's, you, you've been on some big stages. So it, you're you're professional in all different uh, ways here and that's how you know uh, Hollywood, I guess, so well. Uh, 
the penny. So yeah, continue on. I was a singer, a writer, an actress. I was trained at Stella Adler University. Stella Adler trained Marlon Brando and Robert De Niro. And as I say, you know, what happened there? Because they turned out to be awful individuals. Um, and and I didn't. So, you know, I didn't I didn't go the sex trafficking uh, route, um, although I was sex trafficking. So I speak upon the military industrial entertainment complex. What is it? OK, so the military industrial entertainment complex includes the military, the CIA, the DOJ, the DOD, the DIA, the FBI, DARPA and other military and non-military assets, a.k.a. agents. It includes the Mockingbird news media, Hollywood, television, theater, religion, sports, book media, politics, world leaders, scientists, technologists, doctors, teachers, lawyers, etc. What it actually is, it's a combined effort of the New World Order and the military industrial complex to disclose strategized military intel through movies about advanced operations, to disseminate co-intel on propaganda, to deliver messages to CIA operatives, and to trigger MK ultra covert operatives, which that's what we were speaking about when we were speaking about um, Cremo. Right. It was uh, the Uvalde school shooter mm -hmm. uh, to program the masses through subliminal covert and overt messages to solicit followers for the New World Order satanic agenda to install kings, presidents, politicians to garner support for wars, to further install religious leaders who serve the New World Order agenda and to sway the political body to serve the current agenda. So this would include, you know, all of Hollywood. It would include the popes, OK, because every single faction in the world needs to use news media to get their story out. So this also includes books and the and many of the writers, uh, prolific writers like Tom Clancy, they must be CIA because they have a prolific knowledge of uh, covert activities, which otherwise would not be available to them. You know, somebody in conspiracy theory, uh, the character Jerry had said that um, Oliver Stone was uh, a disinformation agent, he said, because he must be, because otherwise, why would he get that platform? Right. That right. was in the movie. The mainstream media is not telling any of us about all these deep subjects that we that you're being that you're letting out here, and also what I heard from Tom out like last week. But I heard on the Fox they were discussing the phases in which the new world order is coming, and they said now we're in the food phase. So they are talking about it a little bit. They said that now they're, they're, you know, the First Amendment, Second Amendment, and now the food order is coming in where they're going to starve us out, just like in Sri Lanka. They said that was a trial uh, country to see what they could do to destroy it, and that's what they're doing to us now. Yes, and the Sri Lanka PM just fled the country, and he left somebody else in charge. I think that person fled, too, because right. they were just knocking down the doors, and they wanted to hang somebody. They wanted to pull them out and hang them because they're starving in the streets. Right. Well, uh, the, the ugly arts are living um, in virtual, um, you know, ki uh, virtual kingdoms availed of, you know, all the necessities. Well, you see um, actresses and actors um, out there, um like eating grasshoppers and stuff like that. What is that supposed to make it attractive to you? Because I'm not going to be eating bugs. Is that what they're telling us? Hey, right. look, yum, yum, eat these. You know, I'm eating them right. and uh, and they taste wonderful. Is that what, what they're basically telling us is that we're going to have to scour the earth if we don't prepare. And these are, these are not, um, these warnings are not warnings for fear. They're not fear mongering warnings. They're warnings for you to be prepared right okay. and uh, you know I, when I was on the road I always had a backup for my backup because if something happens it's like you when you're in a war you want to make sure if your gun is messed up you have a backup right. you have knives or whatever it is that you ne do need to do your job which your job as a soldier more than often is to kill that is your job uh, well, there, anymore, they're trying to make them out of uh, snowflakes. They're they're training them to be, uh, I guess, weak and and this uh, this diversity training that they're that they're having right now is causing a lot of uh, shortages in recruitments. At least forty percent. That's terrible. You well, know? the military in and of itself is an MK Ultra operation. It it's ba it's predicated upon order. It's predicated you take orders from someone and your students and your compliance. So that is one of the first and foremost MK Ultra 
organizations on this planet is the military because you must take orders and you have no choice. If you choose to not take those orders, then you're committing treason and you're thrown in jail for that. Right. Right. I, yeah, I know that for a fact. I served in the military and I served, well, you know, voluntarily. I was a good soldier. I didn't think about ever leaving or retreat, you know, retreating or anything like, you know, in my mind, I was doing the duty for my country. But so many and the book that I, I told you I was, I was I was going to put up, but the I guess the Zoom didn't let me pop it back up. But it's senseless wars and all the waste of our blood and our treasure has just gone away for nothing and look at all these countries we fought for vietnam we didn't really lose that war the politicians and the people wanted us out and the liberal media john Kerry being one of them they caused so much chaos that they caused the politicians to pull us out of the war in vietnam before we won it we, they were just about ready to surrender they pulled it up but the other wars like afghanistan iraq what have we gained in that area except more terrorism so the reason why I started talking about the Pope was because there was speculation regarding his resignation. Okay, and there's also speculation w within uh, Trump being the last president, which is a time traveling uh, speculation predicated upon a book that was written by, um, I forget what his name is, uh, Angersoll Lockhart. Angersoll Lockhart wrote two books, one wrote one about a, a kid named Baron Trump and his travels and then another one about the last president and so there was speculation that trump was going to be the last president and then there's also is this the last pope so i'm going to play this little thing it's about three minutes it's pope francis raises speculation regarding his resignation okay pope francis on pentecost sunday warning catholics that focusing on the past risks making faith a museum piece <laughs> This morning, it is his present and future that has the rumor mill rolling. The Vatican announcing over the weekend the Pope will visit the Italian city of L'Aquila, home to Pope St. Celestine V, who resigned in 1294, and more recently, where Pope Benedict made a symbolic gesture in 2009, before announcing his own resignation four years later. Associated Press Vatican correspondent Nicole Winfield says some are reading meaning into the trip. We now have Pope Francis also making a pilgrimage to L'Aquila. Maybe, perhaps, or maybe not, the Pope might have in the back of his mind that at some point he might also resign. Francis will make the trip the day after he holds a formal assembly called a consistory to create 21 new cardinals. 16 are under the age of 80. And okay, so 16 of these cardinals are under the ripe old age of 80. Mm. Yeah, so their bench doesn't look very good, right? Right, but this looks to me like they're going to, they're going to, he, the, the prior pope resigned due to ill health. This pope is in a wheelchair. Um, he's had major surgeries, um, difficulty standing, which is one of the reasons why he's canceled some of his engagements because he can't stand for long periods of time, which means he can't walk. He's going to be wheelchair all around. So, you know, not doing good physically, which is the primary reason as to why we actually, uh, there were, there are, there were talks and prophecies about being, uh, having two presidents. Okay. Biden and Trump would be two presidents, right? right? Well, we actually do have two popes alive because the Pope, the papacy is held for a lifetime. So this, uh, the prior Pope Benedict, he resigned, but he's still alive. So effectively, we have two popes right now as well. And you're you're saying that Trump was going to be our last president, but now we got Biden, and now Trump may come back. Is that what? Right. If if Trump, let's just say, if Trump was the legitimate president, and I'm, and I'm just going to throw this out here because I'm not taking sides on this issue whatsoever, mm -hmm. um, then that would mean that we have a pope. That we have a president in office which is illegitimate but we actually have two presidents okay and now in the in the books they said that uh there would be a last president before the fall of america there'd be one last president and then the states would resign from the union we would be enmeshed in civil war and then world war three and then the dissolution of the republic for which it stands 
will no longer be standing. It will be uh, partisaned into segments, which I saw when I saw in a pro when I had a vision of it. I saw the United States dissolved into districts, and I separated these districts on a map when I was locked away um, because I was declared enemy of the state. I saw I partitioned them out as to which segments would be the parcels, Texas being a republic of its own and having some other outlining areas. And I have that map, but I don't have it on me. That would be for another show. But if in fact, uh, you know, according to the time traveling books, they said the last president. So some are saying that uh, Biden is not the president of the corporation America. Right. Yeah, I heard that. Right. So then that would be that there would be two presidents, a business president, which would be the because we are a corporation. And how many um, actual constitutions do we have? You know, I'm under the impression that we have more than one. And Kevin Chip said the same thing. He said he knows that we have two uh, constitutions and he's a patriot. And he says, you know, I just feel that the, the constitution that we know and love is not the one that is being served and that we're in deep trouble as the United States. And I don't want to be all doom and gloom. Um, but so this is just giving you an example about Pope Francis, the speculation regarding uh, his resignation. And now here he says that World War III has begun. World War III has been declared, Pope Francis said, in a wide-ranging conversation with the editors of European Jesuit publications May 19th, referring to Russia's attack against Ukraine. The conversation was published by the Italian Jesuit publication La Sevilla Cattolica and the secular newspaper La Stampa on June 14th and is sure to spark discussion. So now, are we in World War III? Because I actually saw World War III. Um, I saw a civil war, which actually turned out to be a bio war. And it's I saw it happening 0202 mm -hmm. And that was when uh, the... the um, who declared the first um, in, in America, they declared marching orders in regards to shutting things down in the United States. That that was the day. We're heading um, up to break now, Penny. Uh, we're going to take a pause and we'll be right back. Uh, you're listening to Dave Emmons' show and Penny L.A. Shepard is uh, really giving us some good information. This should open your eyes up. And also your thoughts about what's going on out there. People really need to wake up and say, what's really going on out there? Uh, WODY Radio is picking up the audio on it that we're syndicated with them. And that's odysseyradio.live. And uh, we'll be right back after this pause. Welcome back, everybody. This is our second segment on the Dave Emmons Show, and we're syndicated through WDY Radio out of Maryland, and that is odysseyradio.live, and we have a good show for you today, something to open your eyes up. Last week, I had a show also with a guest that uh, that these two know each other, and they also know MK Ultra, and they know the deep state, and all the dark things that's going on. I want to make a disclaimer that we talked about in the first segment uh, is about the Uvalde shooter. He was not a, a rapper, and he didn't have the hundred thousand uh, dollars. Right now, I think Penny, when she comes back up, she will will be describing this Fourth of July shooter in in the uh, Highland Park, Illinois, Robert E. Cremo or Cremo, they call him, and he was the rapper and had the money to buy. Uh, stuff and what we'll let uh, Penny Penny L.A. Shepard uh, she's my guest Penny uh, continue on you got some really interesting stuff going on here uh, yes yeah, so to, just to clarify I, I I was talking about the Uvalde shooter but I also was um, I moved on to other shooters so uh, just for clarity it was the 4th of July shooter that I was speaking about Robert E. Cremo who um, Robert E. Cremo III, it was called, AKA Awake the Rapper. There were seven dead and 38 wounded. And I had spoken on this on the show that I'm on on Fridays, Dave Zublick's Dark Outpost. And um, so I did a short expose on him. Also, because I am the real 11 depicted in Stranger Things, I also do um, movie, uh, movie breakdowns, deciphering of movies. And then I also intermix 
that because I speak about the military industrial entertainment complex with um, the actual real MK ultras that are in this world. So here you see uh, Primo, and that's when I was saying he had the 47 tattooed on his face. So of course the Uvalde, the Uvalde guy didn't have um, the 47 tattooed on his face. Um, and he didn't, this guy didn't kill his grandma. Okay. No, but so, this guy, so, he, just saying, I made a little error there. No, he, but, uh, he was 18, but he also bought two guns and he bought a lot of ammo and he was a burger flipper, like I said earlier, and, and how he got all the money. And then all of a sudden we got into both shooters, uh, you know, history here. And, uh, so we got a mix up there. So it, it could have been, could have been me. So, um, so, so many. <laughs> go ahead. Did you want to talk? No, go ahead. I said, I said go ahead and uh, explain this Cremo thing. Okay. So, uh, on to the actual, it wasn't the Uvalde shooter. It was actually, I was speaking um, of the 4th of July shooter, uh, which is Robert E. Cremo III and his AKA Awake the Rapper. So, this is the gentleman who had 100 grand to almost 300 grand in the bank. And that's how he could afford these guns. I don't know how the other shooter afforded his guns. I did a segment on him, but I haven't followed up on it. Sometimes it takes uh, a little bit of time where more information will be forthcoming to understand uh, what the implications of the individual are. And sometimes we get just little dip, dribs and drabs. And then sometimes we just get a preponderance of evidence. In this particular case, though, the FBI um, scrubbed everything pretty much scrubbed all of his social media, but he still had uh, some things up and I don't think they can they can actually take those down um, on uh, Apple and other uh, other venues in which he was selling his music. So this is the gentleman who had been a rapper since 2011. And so that's how he could afford to uh, purchase what he purchased. There's various pictures of him. This is a symbol that he has, which is a weird symbol I tried to track down. There's a picture of him in front of an American flag in a schoolroom. And then here's a picture of him with, you know, showing his eye. Um, and he also has 47 tattooed on his side. And these, there, are, I, for those of you who can't see, who aren't visually seeing it, um, I'll just explain some of the pictures. There's uh, a picture of him, uh, a drawn picture with a shooter and a somebody dead in a hallway we don't know if it's a school shooting there's another picture of him near an exit sign wearing a trump a trump flag he was at a trump rally and i i wondered when i was debating with the what the 47 stood for if the 47 in fact might have been uh trump is the 45th biden's the 46th and if trump runs again he'd be the 47th so why was he why did he meet the trump uh the trump brigade so to speak at an airport and he videoed himself um, at the airport seeing Trump. And then uh, one of the other things I noticed is he has a, t a tattoo. Now, yeah, I think he has one on his arm, but he also has one on his neck. Then one on his neck is of a rose. So uh, when watching the last season of Stranger Things, um, one of the uh, the individuals, the children break into the house of the, the super villain, his name is Vecna. And in that house on the door, they break in through the door is a rose. A stained glass rose. And I had to actually go back to my house because of the comparisons in Stranger Things, which pertain to me. I had to go back to my house because I remembered that there was a rose, a stained glass rose, but I was like, was it on the door? And so I actually had to get pictures. My condo was sold uh, pretty much out from under me. And um, there was a rose, but the rose was a stained glass in a stained glass window next to the door. <laughs> No. Next to my royal typewriter, because I'm a writer. Right. And that thing you could have you could have killed Germans with that thing, just drop a royal typewriter out of a, <laughs> a bomber, you know. <laughs> like, what is that? And you know, they're dead. Splat. You know, it was a royal typewriter, you call me. Man, uh, what was so the <laughs> connection with forty seven and Trump uh with this guy? They never said anything, even on the uh uh, on the on the radio, I mean, on the TV stations that don't like Trump, they didn't even make a connection to the Trump yeah. killer. Um, so I, when I, when I'm researching these things, these are, um, this is like the uh, Robert. They call him Bobby Crimo, right. um, aka Awake the Rapper. And here's a little bit that they're discussing about. I'm gonna breeze through it, but it's like five minutes. But 
Mm -hmm. I'll probably stop it at one point. All right. Very sad. And that's where we're going to begin today because police in a Chicago suburb, they are trying to unravel the reason for a deadly attack on the town's 4th of July parade. So can't get over that one. A gunman opened fire from the top of a building in Highland Park, Illinois, killing six people and injuring dozens more. These are holding a person of interest, they say, who posted violent videos and imagery on social media. They have also recovered the rifle allegedly used in the shootings. Joining us now is the longtime mayor of Highland Park. That's Nancy Rotering, who was leading yesterday's parade at the time. Mayor, good morning. I'm so. By the way, this is the mayor. And uh, she knew this kid in Cub Scouts. Yeah. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Sorry that you are a member of that club. Nobody wants to be in a mass shooting in your town. And we keep hearing that at first people thought that it was fireworks or firecrackers when they heard it. Take us there. What was the scene like for you? We were in the middle of a joyful celebration, having not had this parade for two years due to the pandemic. It was uh, multi families deep along the parade route with a lot of folks shouting out. It was really joyful and wonderful. Um, I noticed the marching band racing down the sidewalk at one point and couldn't understand what they were doing, thought maybe they were late for a performance. And then suddenly police cars were racing towards us. And again, it was like, well, maybe somebody's having a heart attack. It just didn't register that somebody was committing a mass shooting in, in my city. My husband was right there. He was right in the viewing stands. Um, and he said it was just measured pop, 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 pop. And he said, that's when they realized after about 15 of those, that it wasn't fireworks, that it was yeah. gunshots. Mm. Yeah, what can you tell us about the suspect? I've heard that you've, you've had some connection to him in the past. I was his Cub Scout pack leader. He was a little boy at the time. Uh, my heart breaks for everybody in this town. I'm not sure what happened uh, to him to compel him to commit this kind of evil in his hometown. Um, but we have a city that is in deep mourning today, and uh, we are going to take a long time to heal from all of this. Okay, so that's crazy, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> and she she said, him in Cub Scouts. Yeah. And they also said the population of Highland Park was, what, 40% Jewish? And uh, and I they thought maybe there might have been a connection with that. You know, he, he might have been uh, some sort of a anti-Jewish type of a guy. But uh, if he's supporting Trump, uh, Trump doesn't support that kind of activity. Yeah, I don't think he was a Trump supporter. I think he was the reason why he I think he was ma mocking him, making fun of him. OK, and I, I think he also was an Antifa. Right. So, you know, he was not, I do not believe he was a, a I believe his, all of his propagandist was uh, leftist. So he would not have been a Trump supporter. Well, that's um, that's why CNN and, and MSNBC wouldn't talk about him then, because he was Antifa. He was one of their people. <laughs> right. I, so there, there's this gentleman, he has a, 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 a podcast called Fat and Opinionated. Uh, wow. And so... He went and he and before they scrubbed everything, he was, you know, he was really sleuth about this, and he found some some things. What's up, and welcome to my point of view. I am your fat and opinionated host, and I want to wish all of you all a very happy Fourth of July. Please be safe out there tonight. As we all know, there are a lot of crazy people out there. Wow. Now, unfortunately, this is not a happy Fourth of July. For many families in the Highland Park area of now, Illinois. Yes, there's a picture of him right there with a happy face on. Oh. And then, do you remember the happy face killers? Yes. Yes. This is, this is a, well, I never heard this before. I guess you won't on regular news. No. Uh, that's what I do is I scour all of the all of the segments to try and get as much information as I can to play it for people so that, um, you know, and I say, hey, go find this guy, fat and opinionated host. You know, find him on, uh, right. on YouTube. Right. Follow him. Because this guy, he's a super sleuth. And he, he went and he got all this information just for you guys to, you know, just for people to see. Right. Because there was another mass shooting today at a 4th of July parade that left. Okay, this is one of his songs, Toy Soldier. Now, uh, for those that can't see, it's a, a toy soldier or a soldier laying down in a pool of blood on the road with the cops in front of him. Sounds familiar, right? Yes. At least six people dead 
and dozens injured. Now, early on after this incident. Okay. Now, this is at his house. This is uh, drawn on the side of his house, a happy face killer in a green outfit with a looks like a submachine gun. Right. It was identify the shooter as Robert Cremo, and I was able to track down various social media pages that belong to Robert Cremo. Now, since the time that I was able to track them down, a lot of these pages have been deleted. I'm talking multiple YouTube pages, multiple Twitter accounts, and an Instagram account as well. I'm not sure why the government and the FBI and law enforcement always feels the need to scrub all of this evidence off of the internet. But luckily I was able to document some of what he was saying and liking on Twitter. And I was able to record so he's going, and document. He's going through some of the things that this kid liked. So when you're seeing all this, this scroll through, right. these are some likes that he had of people that he liked. And some of the videos that he had up on his YouTube channel. I'm warning you all now, some of this stuff is disturbing. But I want to give you all just a brief glimpse of who Robert Cremo might have been. Of course, we don't know the motive behind why he did what he did yet. And honestly, I don't believe we ever will. We know the mainstream media likes to spin their own narratives when it comes to these mass casualty events. And I, I really don't appreciate how they try to cover up the evidence. If there's nothing to hide, leave all the social media pages up so people can go and see for themselves. Unfortunately, that's not what they ever do. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and take a look at some videos and some stuff that Robert Cremo posted. And I'll talk to you all on the next video. Okay, so for people who can't see, this is a video, his video, his music video. He's in a classroom. The classroom is littered with papers. He's got his hand over his head. The room is green. And it's, uh, I'll try to narrate it as I go along. Uh, let me see if I can put this down just a little bit. Is somebody else filming this? This is his film. So, so he yes, as a, he has somebody filming it or he set this up for himself. Okay. This is his actual video, music video. One of the things that he sold. Okay, there's maniacal laughter all through this whole thing. It's like the Joker. It's really, you know, so he's in a classroom spinning around. He's got his head in his hands. Showing the blackboard, the world. Now they show him here uh, standing in front of a doorway with uh, this is a symbol on its hat, symbol that he wears on everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure what that symbol is. I tried to look it up. Uh, and then he's got the happy face killer thing on again, and it is flashing. This is his video, his music video. Mm -hmm. He's very talented. He's very weird looking too. <laughs> yeah. So the tearing up thing, the standing in front of the lockers, going out to the hall. He's he presses the fire alarm, so it looks like he's in you know where they used to have the PA and everything right. to make announcements for the school. How he got access to this for his video, I don't know. Standing in front of a flag, hanging out the blaster. Set of the desk in front of the world map. So that would be like New World Order. He's right. pointing his pen at the map. Picture of the flag, more maniac the laughter. The school probably would have permitted him if they thought it was legitimate. At the time, he was legitimate, I guess. Yes, he was. That's what he had. You know, I don't understand this. It looks like hand sanitizer. But they're making everybody have hand sanitizer. And maybe it was a school closed during COVID. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then here's a line of what appears to be a line of blood down a hall. A red line going all the way down the hall. So pretty creepy. Kind of like a copycat of the Uvalde killings. Very, very creepy. Yeah. And this, I don't know when 
when he made that video, that would be something I'd have to actually like take a look at mm -hmm. a little bit more. Um, this is another guy, Watchman News, who had more information on him. Um, so let's get to the 47. So Robert Bobby Cremo, a.k.a. Awake the Rapper, he has 47 tattooed on his face. Um, so I'm trying to figure it out because I'm a cypherist. And so I look at National Treasure. His National Treasure, 47, is a page number in Disney's National Treasure Book of Secrets. The Book of Secrets was about the presidents, which led me again to Trump. Really? So I'm going to play a little bit of the Book of Treasures. Okay. Interesting. Of... What is it about treasures? <laughs> It's it's so fascinating. He's actually a Mr. Pobola. Gates has spent a lifetime hunting treasures that have been lost to history. Take a look at this. But when a secret from the past is uncovered. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you one of the missing pages from the diary of John Wilkes Booth. History will be rewritten. It's the names of the Lincoln conspirators. Thomas Gates. Your great great granddad planned the assassination. It can't be. And I wonder about the Gates, if that had to do with the Gates family, Bill Gates. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah I saw this movie. It's a pretty good movie. Yeah. So if you haven't seen it, I encourage you to please, yeah. you know, take a look at the sequence of it because it talks about the Declaration of Independence. It talks about the Freemasons. It talks about Benjamin Franklin, who was a Freemason. Um, so it it leads you to other places it's a departure point for your research. So I use movies and television series to deprogram people. I use the weaponization, which was used against us. I use it now to deprogram MK ultras because you can be set off by watching a movie or by listening to a television series. They have overt and covert messages within these television series, also within music, yeah. also within, uh, in Broadway. So uh, also in newspapers, you can read it. Read a, a code word newspaper. So that's why I'm why I say all of these modalities uh, comprom comprise the military industrial entertainment complex, which works hand in hand with the military industrial complex. It's one of right. the many complexes, but I say they're basically one and the same. They cannot work without the other one. Right, and a lot of times I, these uh, secret organizations say the best way to hide a secret is in plain sight. Right. Yeah. So they're they're giving you militarized, strategized intel in the movies and the television series. They're telling you that um, that there is advanced technology. So they're they're revealing to you that is the reveal. So if you want to know what the actual reveal is, and you start watching some of these things, and you're awake, you will then be able to actually deprogram yourself. Because I wonder if these MK Ultras are getting set off by codes. This guy was a a codex in and of himself. He was providing codes, and I think he was also doing MK Ultra programming for all of those followers that he had. This, right. you know, but what set him off on this particular day, we may not know. But was it something in the media or whatever? His, his uh, uncle said, "Oh, we didn't see you know anything strange. Really, you didn't see anything strange because the kid had a happy face killer on the side of his." house but that's normal yeah and these red flag rules and laws aren't going to work very well if people don't cooperate uh so but the red flag laws aren't really to go after these crazies they're after to, they're actually after to go after all of us yes get all of our guns it's just an open door for them to do that uh you talked about uh, our founding fathers benjamin franklin and george washington were both kind of strange characters in the fact that uh, i had a, a little 10 minute show i had uh here a couple weeks ago on saint germain he was at the signing of the declaration of independence and he was a very strange odd character six foot four light complected and so he walks in the door at their meeting in philadelphia there's 47 delegates at the time eight of them were missing but he talked to him about doing that at he said do it do the you know the declaration of independence and they were all afraid to lose their their heads because the british were very tough about people going against them at that time so he talked them into doing it and when and he never ate anything underground he ate everything above he's a veg vegetarian he had hot tea so he didn't like the water but he was a strange guy, and all this goes back into the Masons, Ben Franklin, George Washington. Uh, Judge Washington was visited by angels, or the whole bit. So where do we get to go? 
you know, our founding fathers started this. Yeah, Benjamin Franklin, as, as far as I recall in my research of him, there they found uh, bones in his basement. So what was Ben doing in his basement? Was he like, you know, testing out his uh, electric theories on people? Was he eating them? Eating. Was he torturing that's, them? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Eating them. Maybe he was a reptilian. <laughs> We're getting into the ET thing. That's my expertise, but this is not what this show is about. Now, you're saying that these guys... Uh, even the 18-year-old in uh, Uvalde and this guy on July 4th, uh, Cremo, they could have been Manchurian candidates? Yes, I believe so. Um, and I'm not, again, I'm not sure what set this guy off, but he is prolific. He was, I think he was indie, so I don't know if he was signed with anyone per se. I haven't researched that, so I, I, I'm speaking speculatively because I don't know. And I, I try not to put forth anything that I actually haven't researched or that I don't know. Um, so... In regards to this individual, I, I was trying to research the 47 because the guy tattooed it on his face. I mean, seriously, when you go to the face tattoos, you're gone as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> you're, you're not ever going to go into acting. Yeah. You know, you, you might you might be able to go into the rap community because they've tattooed their face. So that's that's something that's so important to them. They want to see it every time they look in the mirror and they want you to see it. Mm -hmm. So it's you can't cover that up unless you cover your face up with a bag you right. know it's there specifically for you to see they want you to see that so you know this was an important thing why the 47 so right. then i say 47 was using nicholas cage cage's movie nicholas cage by the way is um francis ford coppola's uh nephew okay so he's a coppola really yes <laughs> And he just changed his name to Cage instead of Coppola. I, that, I, I forget what his middle name is. But um, so he was in the movie National Treasure. Now, Trump was a 40, was a fit, 45th president. Biden is a 46th. Trump, if reelected in 2024, would be the 47th president. National Treasure 3 is due in 2024, which also is when Trump says he might be coming back. And then also four plus seven equals 11. And he committed this on July 4th. So that's also 47. It's the seventh month, the fourth day, right. 47, which tattooed on his face. 47 was very, very important to this kid for whatever reason. So, um, you know, I'm showing you that the second film, National Treasure 2, Book of Secrets, ended with the characters looking at page 47 of a secret book owned by the President of the United States. No explanation for the page 47 was ever given. Now, many people say that the page 47 had to do with the ETs. Yeah, yeah. But we don't know. So this is, you know, more speculation on 47. So then when I started doing a little bit more research, I found what I believe to be the actual, what the 47 was all about. This kid, it's a hit man. We don't know how many hit, hits that this kid has, has done. He's living in Chicago. Okay. He's living in Illinois mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, not too far from Chicago. And, uh, so hit man, agent 47. Okay. More than likely, I believe that's what this kid is because the kid is a hit man. On the back of his, on the back of the hitman's neck, he's got a barcode. There's a 47 on it. Agent 47 is an agent, a genetically enhanced super soldier, created by Dr. Peter Litvinko, a skilled Ukrainian. <laughs> there's a hang right there. No. Ukrainian geneticist. Litvinko, unable to bear the guilt of his creation, abandoned the agent project. 47 works as a hitman for the ICA, International Contracts Agency, and has spent the last few years tracking down Litvinko's daughter, Katya. He gets a lead from mercenaries led by Del Riego, who have been trying to find Litvinko in order to recreate the agent program for their own means. Essentially, he's saying he, he may believe that he's been genetically enhanced and is a super soldier. This kid was very talented, okay? Even though his music was disturbing, right. he was able to... He, I believe he produced much of this in his own. I tried to contact a friend of his who was on Twitter. He hasn't responded. I guess he got off Twitter, but he said he worked with him in 2015. And I wondered, since Stranger Things came out in 2016, did he watch Stranger Things? Because Stranger Things um, has been around since 2016. And um, I believe they premiered again, uh, maybe... July, I'm not sure if it was July 1st or not, 
I think they premiered on July 1st. Right. Their, their, their last season. So this guy goes off on July 4th. Don't quote me. Look it up. I could be wrong. Okay. So this is just more on, on this agent, on the, on the hitman. And uh, there's a little, there's a little trailer on, on it, on the hitman. So, yeah, everything in movies has some reality to it. Yes. So this is the hitman. It's a shot of him with the back of his head. Barcode. Why we start with your name? Do you not think that that is the exact scene that happened when this kid got arrested? No. Right. Well, why don't we start with your name, right? This kid is living this movie. He is the hitman now. 47. That's not a name. But it is mine. What exactly are you? An assassin. And you're here to kill who? You should really let me go. Last time I checked, you're the one locked in here with me, and I'm the one with the gun. Uh, Mr. Sanders, you're locked in here with me. Okay, so that's a little piece of what the hitman is. Right. I believe that was actually... Uh, We're going to take a break right now, Penny. Uh, you're listening to Dave Emmons' show, and it's also syndicated through WDY Radio, odysseyradio.live, and you're listening to Penny L.A. Shepherd. and we have a lot more coming up. We have two more segments to go, so hang on. Hi, and this is our third segment on the Dave Emmons Show, and it's syndicated through WDY Radio, odysseyradio.live, and Penny L.A. Shepard is our guest today, and she's got some very interesting information, and it's kind of like the information you don't hear on mainstream media, and you won't hear it because they are paid off not to not to talk about this stuff but here we have independent i guess uh researchers and investigators and, and penny is also an investigator and she researches all this stuff so we're going to continue on penny go ahead and uh, continue on penny l la, LA shepherd okay so we were we were speaking about bobby crimo or robert crimo the fourth uh, of july shooter in highland park aka awake the rapper now, one of the things that I do is I, I, put, I put things together with movies. So I had noticed that in um, Stranger Things, there, uh, which I believe it premiered July 1st, um, they introduced a villain called Vecna. And his actual name was Henry Creel. And Henry Creel um, is called Number One. Okay, so they're saying their speculation was number one or was number one's father, Eleven's actual father, that they used his DNA to create Eleven. They were locked in the same facility together, and you'll have to actually watch it to see what happens. So uh, the, there's a door that the children that are together um, break through this door at Henry Creel's house. And there's what happens in Henry Creel's house when he's a child is he actually kills his father or he doesn't kill his father he kills his mother and he kills his sister and then he he goes into a coma and his father has his eyes gouged out and his father's in prison because they blame the father for it but then they take this kid and they bring him to the same facility that eleven's brought to which i am the actual 11 and stranger things so when I'm looking at the rose on his neck, first of all, before this happened, two days before this, I'm researching this, right? Mm -hmm. I'm researching this rose. So I have this rose on my mind because I remember having this rose at my house and I'm like, was it on the door? So I have to go back and take, I have to go find realtor pictures of the, of the condo. And then I look and say, no, it's not on the door. I'm like, oh, I know where it is. It's right next to the door. And then I see the roses and then in, in the middle of the roses is a T. And I remember when I first moved in there with my, my husband before we got married, um, I said, what's the T for? It's the T for time. But there was a, a rose. There were, you know, little roses on the side, just like that. Okay. So I thought that's weird. 
Well, this kid had the rose on his neck. And then he also, I believe, has a tattoo on his arm. I'm not certain about that, but I believe he has a tattoo on his arm. But it it's reminiscent of the Democratic Socialists of America. So Crimeo is not um, he's not a Trump supporter. He is, a, I would say, a liberal and more than likely a Democrat. Um, we're not sure what this rose pertains to. It could be Rosicrucian, but I just found the the oddity of this rose and this rose, and I just been looking for that for two days, and then this kid comes out with the shooting, and I'm like, okay, wow. Now there was a there was a figure, a symbol, which I still am not sure what the symbol is, but the following slide makes makes sense. Yeah, it looks, I also it looks like four fours, Penny. Does that yeah. have numerical value? It's like four fours back to back. It also looks like tic tac toe, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of like a tic tac toe. It also looks like triangles, right. if you will, intersecting triangles. But he had this on everything. You saw it on his hat. You saw, see it on shirts of his. You see it. Uh, it's that's his symbol. Um, so symbols. They say symbols will be their downfall, but symbols are everything. So I had found this symbol on a, a bed tray, which I have been writing for years. And sometimes I write in the, you know, at home, I write on a bed tray, I flip the bed tray over. And um, I've always had, you know, something like that to keep all my stuff together. So I found this bed tray and um, this symbol was compelling to me. And then when I, um, I, I bought it at a, a Ross dress for less and the tray was then given away by my brother to my niece. I retrieved it and I tried to figure out what the symbol was. I asked everybody, you know what the symbol is? They're like, well, it's yin and yang. Um, but I I also, John Dies at the End is a movie that I've watched maybe, I don't know, 17 times. And the reason why is because my brother, one of my brothers, his name is John and John was my agent. And uh, when I was at a church, called willow creek in illinois in uh, barrington illinois there were renderings of my brother on the wall and this is a church okay and one of them had he had both of them he had a mask on and one of the renderings there was like a line on this side and a line underneath and i was looking at it i said i know that's john i would recognize him for a thousand years so that brings in question was i were we together a thousand for a thousand years? Mm -hmm. And then I said, what is this timeline? Why is he wearing a ma a surgeon's mask? Is this um, sometime like a, a pandemic or something? That's what I wondered. That was in 2016 when I found this rendering. Then in the prayer and worship room was a life-size rendering in the prayer and worship room. And John, again, is in that rendering wearing a mask on the right-hand side. And in the middle is an ET. It looks like an alien gray, only it's colored. Like um, there's a new series out. It's called uh, Resident Alien. Right. It's a funny movie. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's not all that funny. You need to actually no, understand that thing. It, it and in that, I was compelled to watch this. I don't have cable. I don't watch TV. But I was like, I need to watch this. I was drawn to it. I have to watch this because it looked like the figure that was in the church, in the prayer and worship room of a mega church. This is real life. I'm seeing this. I took the pictures. I have the pictures. I can. I think I might have sent them to you once. Now, looks like a tip alien. Is that what you're saying? Yes. It's it's uh, when I what I did was I decolored it. It's a gray. Mm -hmm. And then on the right hand, uh, like where John was on the right hand side, I decolored the whole thing in the middle, which is it's colored like in Resident Alien. That's what it looks like. It's got writing all over it. And then when I decolored it, that's an alien gray. And then on this side, that's an alien gray looking at that alien gray. Mm -hmm. behind, the, behind the other pictures, this is in a mega church in Illinois called willow creek and i took pictures of it so they're being they're being worshipped in a mega church and john dies in the end they go to another dimension and the the two characters are john and david well i have a murdered brother named david who wrote a book called the whistleblower and 
It was unpublished. That book with the last screenplay was taken from me by an agent from Willow Creek. Mm -hmm. And um, so, and the other brother is John David. That's his middle name. Right. So the two characters are John and David. They go to another dimension and their, their renderings are hanging on the wall in a church and they're being worshipped. So you're saying this resident a, uh, alien, I haven't watched it all, but I, I just took it as being comical, but you're saying it has some seriousness in it. Is this kind of like what Hollywood actually is throwing reality at people and they're hiding? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's what I'm saying is that when you're looking at these movies, they're actually Stargate is real. Okay, Stargate is situated at NORAD. Right. That means that they have Stargates at NORAD. By the way, I found out that Mike Lacchino finished his last four terms, his last four years at NORAD. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Yeah. It's all, it all just falls together, Penny. It's just unrealistic how, how things, just like the movie, uh, the first movie that uh, I guess Spielberg made, uh, The Third Kind or whatever. And um, yes. That was the I, encounters of the third kind. Well, that was that was for real, you know. They, yes, it actually happened. Uh, it's amazing. So people watch movies and take them serious, I guess. Except I remember when I was when I was watching Close Encounters of the Third Kind for the third time because when I, I got locked up um, in a crazy house, declared enemy of the state for a year, and then my keyboard player, I. I've been in many, many bands. One of my keyboard players, his name was Patrick. He shows up outside of the hop. Okay. Yeah. Right. The bunny rabbit. Okay. I played the hop. And um, it's in uh, like, it's not Montebello, but it's like in, in that LA region. Right. So he shows up outside and I'm like, what is this? And he shows up with a truck that's exactly like mine. And I'm like, that's weird. And he says that they film portions of Back to the Future there. Yeah. Okay. Then the next day, he shows up at uh, Devil's Mountain. I'm like, what in the actual, you know, age? Yes. The next day, you're one day you're at a place where we played with a car that looks, the truck that looks exactly like mine. Then the next day, you're at Devil's Mountain, you know, which is, so I watched Close Encounters of the Third Kind for the second time. The third time I watched Close Encounters of the Third Kind for the third time. I had been, when I contacted my handler, when I was in Illinois, because I lived in Illinois, I lived there for almost two years, um, you know, a, one year against my will. Yeah. Okay. But um, when I, when I caught, when my handler contacted me, my very first handler, who I believe is the son of, illegitimate son of Albert Spears, Hitler's minister of war, I was at Crystal Lake in Illinois. And I was sitting on the dock of the bay, singing, sitting on the dock of the bay. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it sounds like, yeah. So he calls me and I'm like, this is weird. I haven't heard from him in 40 years. Okay. All of a sudden he wants to talk to me. So then uh, the third time that I watch it, I'm talking to somebody about doing a radio show. And I find out that this person has satanic leanings. And I'm like, no, dude, not doing it. Uh, I looked at some of the people that, that there were two people on that station. And I was like, no, not doing it. But as I'm talking to him, um, I'm, I'm researching. Uh, I had just finished watching Close Encounters of the Third Kind for the third time. And where he gets abducted, he works for the phone company. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> The phone company is NSA. Okay, the phone company is CIA. Always has been. Okay, so he works for the Richard Dreyfus works for the phone company, and then they're going to send him out to where he's going to get abducted, and they tell him to go out to Crystal Lake. I'm like, what? <laughs> but so when I watch these movies, I watch them, and I tell people watch them with the captions on, take pictures, start and stop. If you get sleepy or you fall asleep during something, there's a, there's information in there that you need to actually acquire. Mm -hmm. But if you you can deprogram, it's like reverse neuro linguistic programming. If you're watching these things with the captions on, and then also when you're trying to explain it to somebody, you you're not just showing them a picture; you're showing them the actual dialogue. Okay, so I snap a picture of it. Then later on, when this guy's telling me that he wants me to do this radio show, 
and when I was when I was at my handlers in Lake Havasu, um, because I ended up flying out there because I was um, homeless, and so he flew me out there, and um, and I stayed there forty days and forty nights in Arizona, in the at Lake Havasu, um, in the desert, forty days and forty day, forty days and forty nights with a Satan, not the Satan, but a Satan, and um, so. When, I, when I'm watching, um, when I'm talking to this person about doing the radio show, um, he had, Darrell had told me he needed a new mailbox. So it's like, he kept saying, I need a new mailbox. I need a new mailbox. I need a new mailbox. I like, really? I told you this before. And so um, I found out that at Area 51, they had a mailbox that was stolen. It was stolen many years before. Mm -hmm. And um, as this guy is telling me that he wants me to do the show, I'm thinking, I wonder if there's like, a crystal something, right? Leading down to the ET highway in Nevada. And there is, it's like crystal springs. So I followed that down and then that led to the black mailbox, which then I looked on um, on Google at the black mailbox. And on the black mailbox, there's a strip. They had painted it over. There was graffiti all over it. As a matter of fact, the new one, David Duchovny signed it. And there was a little black strip. And in the middle of the black strip, I'm saying, what does that say? Does that say Bevy was here? Bevy was here? And I'm like, oh, oh, my God. It says Penny was here. Oh, yeah. And that was the old black mailbox, which you can still find. So I'm like, did I put that on there? Mm. I, no. I saw that mailbox back in 2010. A couple of things I want to ask you, Penny, to, to kind of explain to people. When we're talking about Manchurian candidates, who, what organizations are behind that uh, of getting into people's minds and making them do things that they normally probably wouldn't even think about doing? And is this evil or the devil involved? Yes. And what organizations? Um, all the organizations. Doctors are involved with it. DARPA is involved with it. The military is involved with it. Your parents are involved with it. Anybody that was in the military that had a uh, you know, some kind of a clearance level that are availed of this, the Freemasons, the Satanists, they're all involved in it. That is the currency of the new world order is mind control. If you control the mind, you control the body and you control the body politic. You control everything if you control the mind. Right. And, and that's all evil, I guess. That's the uh, Satanism. Yes. Well, I mean, why would you want to control someone's mind? That's the, the antithesis of you know, free of freedom. So while there's an illusion of freedom in America, I believe that we're still run, but we're run by the predecessors of the Third Reich, which is the Fourth Reich, the continuation of the Third Reich, which was established essentially through the Third Reich by the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers who were involved in eugenics. Um, and they were involved in eugenics in the early 1900s. And I believe they, but they funded Hitler. They also funded Mengele. Um, and Mengele reported to Von Schur, and Von Schur, nothing ever happened to Von Schur. He went on to teach at the collegiate level and still received all of the um, all of the records from Joseph Mengele, who gave his reports to Von Schur, and they were doing genetic experiments, and I believe that they, they had gotten alien DNA, um, and they were trying to create genetic hybrids and that was the promise of the uber super soldier that they could make the humans stronger by using alien dna and i believe that they succeeded in that i also believe that they were cloning and this also leads to the x-files because in the x-files the x-files was started on a wiggy case of xenotransplantation now if you look up the definition of xenotransplantation it essentially is the um the transference of genetic materials from one species to another. So they would say like a pig, you take the pig heart out and then you put that in a human being, but it's far more complex than that. That's what they would like you to think. But when you see people like Elon Musk, who is putting in Neuralink uh, implants in monkeys and destroying the monkeys, he had this, uh, this certain glue that he put in, which destroyed the monkeys brains and they had to be euthanized. And there's a lawsuit against him for torture of the of the monkeys. Um, and so these are the implants that they want to put in your head. They also want to put implants in your hands so that you can purchase goods. Just and they had they already had this hand implant in the early uh, 2000s because I remember at uh, Scripps Clinic they wanted to put a, the medical chip in you 
so you can run your hand over and then add all of your medical information. But the military has been doing that for quite some time. Yeah. I mean, Chet, our friend who was murdered, said that he took an implant out of the back of his neck in Vietnam War. Right. The military, they're way ahead of us. They're, they're not telling us everything was going on. The deep state and the cabal. Once, I guess, in, in the, with the crooked politicians that are getting involved in this stuff on both sides of the, of the aisle, I guess, the Republican and the Democrats, they are the... Are you there? Yeah, we, yeah, so we had our 